And hello, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We're going to get our first live playthrough of Scythe on the channel. I have said this before, but this was the first solo game that I really sunk my teeth into, and it is uh, cool to come back to it every now and again. Uh, when I do come back to it, I wonder, why don't I play this more? And then I look at the rest of my shelf of games, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's why. Um, but uh, it's a good one. It's a nice little puzzle the Atoma does play different. I am learning more, too. I think as I improve as a gamer in general, uh, seeing even just the, the, there's a more depth than even I gave it credit, you know, when I when I first used to play it a lot. Um, just, I mean, each, each faction does play a little bit differently. These cards, there's only 19 of them, but, you know, those things in parentheses that make the different factions behave a little differently than the others uh, really do add up to create a, a different experience depending on who the Atoma is. So we have done four episodes of Scythe, I think, four, three, I don't know, one of those two. First one live, I did randomize uh, a couple of weeks ago to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to get ready for this. And we are going to be doing the Nordics. Uh, <laughs> they swim, which is pretty, uh, that probably shouldn't be on. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can read that on the camera. Probably not. Um, it wasn't that risque. It was just a you know <laughs> personal text message I got from my friend. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Nordics and, and their swimming abilities. And man, it's got to be cool. Hence the title of this video. Yes, I think I'm funnier than I am, but that's fine. My wife says I am funny about a third of the time I try to be. So, And I tell her that if I did that in baseball, I would be a Hall of Famer. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, Sarah is the uh, monitor of the chat as usual, Mrs. Playthroughs. So she uh, will answer any of your questions and draw my attention to the chat when there is something there that I need to respond to. Um, I know the screen is a little bit, things are a little bit tilted. I realize my camera is not totally level. So I got to figure out how to address that after this video. Uh, I didn't realize that early enough today to try to correct it. So there's a little bit of a tilt, but not too bad. And now that I brought your attention to it, you're not going to be able to unsee it, which is my fault. We're good. Uh, for those who don't know, we're on a 25 second delay. Not sure how crowded we will be considering it is Thanksgiving Eve in America, but considering this is the weirdest Thanksgiving in the history of the planet. Um, with COVID. I, I don't know if that's going to affect numbers at all. And then my overseas non-American uh, subscribers and viewers, I know I have a number of Scythe fans, judging from those the number of views I get on my videos. So hopefully we can get somewhat of a crowd before we get too deep into this. Now I do, I address the board just to make it all fit on the screen. So I will keep the faction mat for the Nordics here. Again, the mechs, I'll put them on in their place. The mech abilities, we have river walk. It allows us to cross a river into uh, forest or mountains. Uh, we have seaworthy. It allows us to enter uh, to enter and leave uh, lakes as well as retreat to lakes if we lose a combat in an adjacent square. Uh, artillery allows you to, before combat, you can pay one power to decrease the power of your opponent by two. And then we have speed plus one uh, per movement hex for the uh either your mechs or your character we got our character riding his trusty buffalo and we have the two workers there i'm gonna go ahead and set the factions draw first player so it's palania obviously we're gonna be nordic so i'm gonna make palania the atoma i have them set up over here and i'm just gonna put the palania mat right here and it might be nice if i put it not upside down Trying something new, kids. Don't put things upside down on the screen. Awesome. Ding. We have our four mechs. Polanyi is going to go there. Ding, ding. We're going to put the popularity token at the 10. And then we'll have the power token at the 2. And we have the five money that the Atoma starts with. The mechs, the mech abilities for the Atoma does not matter. They behave generically. And then we have our six... Somebody's cracking jokes in here. Oh my. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's up, man? How are you? Uh, we have our six uh, stars, and then we have, again, our six workers. Now, uh, we will. the Atoma will most likely get six stars before I do. We are playing on hard. It is Atoma Zena. Uh, it is going to be accelerated in that sense, but the whole goal is to get enough points that we overtake 
the Atoma's natural lead in the number of stars. And there's a bunch of different ways that can happen, uh, whether we're doing area control or just trying to run up the popularity track into 13. You know, we'll see how it all plays out. All right, draw next player. And I'm going to have to hit keep repicking current player. Oh, second try. Nice. All right, so we are Nordic Engineering. So I will take the number two engineering put that here all right so we have on the leftmost panel we have the produce panel which is linked with the technology uh the tech upgrades so that's interesting we do start on oil so that could be a, a good combo i don't love going after tech upgrades because there's six of them and in a game that only goes 16 to 18 turns it's really hard to do six of anything right so um it, you know the tech if you can pull it off and it's two money each time we'll see obviously we're going to be producing a lot so we i might try to get some synergy there but we'll see how that plays out uh the second panel we have is going to be the trade panel so we put the armory right there i'll put the mill here pay a dollar get two of any resource where a worker is and then uh, that's going to be linked with the uh, deployment of a mech the third panel is the bolster panel, so we can pay a dollar, get our two, what should we call it, two power or two cards, and then that's going to have the monument there if we were to build that, and that's linked with the building. Now, obviously, that is going to be a panel we want to do for two reasons. One, um, the power is going to be really helpful, right, um, against, and although, I mean, the Polanyi is not going to attack as much as, like, say, the cards have um, Saxony attack a lot more, not shockingly, right, um, but, uh, you know, getting that three money, getting all four of the structures out, the structures would be really helpful, and also, the fact that the structure is always linked to the popularity is one of the main ways we can get up this track here, um, and then the final panel is going to be the move panel, obviously, we'll be doing that a lot, and hopefully we can kind of get over here, get into this food supply, so we can do at least a couple of our enlistments. I'm going to put the recruits down here. Power, money, popularity, power card. We have two uh, popularity to start. Again, the, the Otoma starts at 10, does not move from there. We start at 2, and hopefully we'll move to at least 7, and maybe even 13, if I'm feeling frisky after all that swimming in the cold rivers. We are now going to get, uh, we need to get two of our personal objectives. So I'm gonna shuffle this deck up. When we take two, we are only able to do one of them. So we'll see what I pull. I get Underworld Advantage, control at least three tunnels at the end of your turn. And the other one I get is control at least five territories surrounding the same lake. At the end of your turn both of them doable i will probably be more likely to do shore up the shore if you have your scythe cards these are numbers 2 and 19 if you wanted to check out what's going on i'm going to shuffle up the encounter deck and then we just need to shuffle up the power deck and get three factory cards um I have some people have asked in the past videos, do I ever play with more than one Otoma? I don't. I don't find it that enjoyable. Uh, I'd rather just increase the difficulty and play against one. Um, but there, you know, it is what it is. There's, there's a lot going on with multiple Otomas, and I, I just I don't like feeling like I'm managing a game more than I'm actually playing it. Um, and that's always a, a risk. The more you add to the AI features of a game. All right, we have the factory cards i don't always go for a factory card um it is a nice play to get to the factory at the end of the game because obviously that is still worth three hexes just like in a normal game of scythe and the otoma generally will find a way to get there so usually you want to try to kick them off because that's a big swing i mean them getting three hexes at the end of the game versus you getting three i mean it's a six hex difference and when each hex is going to be worth three or four money depending on where i end up and it's definitely worth three points at the end of the game for the atoma we really want to make sure they don't get that nine point uh difference uh i'm going to use again i use a scythe kick app i want to give a shout out to that it's a fantastic app highly recommend it uh the tile that we're using is randomized when i picked my players and we have the building a structure next to a encounter token all right so if we can build one of our structures next to an encounter token, and that that doesn't 
the important thing isn't the number of structures built, it's actually the number of encounter tokens you're adjacent to. So if I end with structures adjacent to, and what I mean by that for someone who doesn't understand what I just said, if I had a structure here and here, uh, that's still only two encounter tokens, even though I'd be doubled up on that one, right? So um, if I'm adjacent to at least one encounter token with my structures at the end of the game, I get two points. If I get two or three, four points, four or five, six points. And if I get six or seven encounter tokens, uh, that I'm adjacent to at the end of the game. That's nine points, which can be pretty significant. It's hard to do. I mean, you're going to really want to build like here is adjacent to three, here's adjacent to two. So you really want to be strategic. I often find that it's not the most beneficial to chase that, but if it works out, great. Um, the one I, I find the easiest to do is actually the straight line, like four in a straight line. It looks cool too. So <laughs> that's something I will usually chase because that's a nice little nine point swing. Uh, or a nice point, nine point bonus. Uh, but it, I do find this one. We'll see what we can pull off. Um, I'm going to get one power card. And I start, since I am the Nordiques, I start with four power. I'll try to keep these high. I know I have the bottom of the board cut off a little bit here. Oh, speaking of which, let me do that. There you go. That's much better. <clears throat> All right. And then I just need to get uh, one power card for me. It's a three. Not bad. I was expecting a two because that's what I would normally pull. And we get three power cards for Palania. I'm going to clear my throat real quick here. Hold on one sec. All right, hopefully I spared you guys from hacking into your, your uh, ears because no one who wants to have their ears hacked into. Not me. So uh, I think we're set. I get five money, which I already took. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Right? I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know. Someone tell me I'm missing something in the chat. I'm going to put this down here so you can see. Obviously, we can't see the symbols at the top of the Star Trek. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but the Atoma doesn't I'll splay these out so we can make it clear that there's three of them there, which is nice. All right, so what do I want to do? The question that never disappoints. Eh, sometimes it disappoints. All right, I think that it makes a little bit of sense before I produce to give myself an ability to do a top and bottom line action. So on my second turn, which would be nice. And then I can, I'll probably make building structures cheaper because I think that would give me a little bit more flexibility going forward. And then if I could build a mill out, that'd be nice. I mean, the, the thing with the Nordics that's nice is that usually with most factions, you're really worried about getting your character out so you can start getting things around you can move your mechs around and whatever but with the nordics again they can they can uh take the little smurf hats and go for a swim which really helps you get spread out and not have to worry about getting out of this little triangle as quickly as you might with the other factions right or at least the other uh five base factions uh so the other four from the, the five base because obviously albion and tagawa have their own little thing going on so I'm going to go to the trade panel. I'm going to spend one dollar. I'm going to get two oil. I'm going to put this in a hex with a Smurf, and I, I'm not going to do a bottom line action. So that is my very exciting first turn of the game. It's on. And Polania, what are they doing? Polania. Okay. So basically, we're going to look at their their top row. They have three possible actions. We're going to go in order, and as soon as they can do a movement, they're done. So the first one is Polania is going to do a encounter or factory movement action with its character. So the character is going to get picked up. The character can get to an encounter token. So it's just going to go right there. You will see Polania jumping around this board to get their encounter tokens because that is what they do. And then they're done. So we don't do the other two actions. Now we're going to get there. Uh, the second row is Polania gets stuff. What are they going to get? They're going to get a meeple and they're going to get a mech. And then we have the enlist bonus. If I had that unearthed, or unlocked, I should say. I guess I'm not digging anything out of the earth. Uh, I would get a popularity. Obviously, I do not have that. And now we go to the middle. It's a star, so I'm going to use this little token of theirs. They start there, and now they're going to move over to the right one. That is it. So again, of these 19 cards, three of them have a grayed out star. Hopefully, we get at least two of them. <laughs> 
before we get to uh, the second part of this uh, Otomo playthrough, but uh, sometimes I'm not that lucky. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, it, it, it's it's like 11 cards. No, nine. It's it's nine. Yeah, nine steps between one and two. So, you know, nine steps, 19 cards. Three of them are gray. I mean, you're usually going to see at least one. Hopefully we see two. Now I'm going to do the produce action. What am I producing? I'm producing a wood. I can produce on two hexes. I'm going to produce a wood on the wood hex. I'm going to produce an oil on the oil hex. And now the bottom line action, I'm going to spend these three oil. They're going to go into there. And we're going to do a tech upgrade. I want to upgrade. What do I want to upgrade? This is a good question. I know. That's why I asked it. Uh, I don't know if the movement's going to be that helpful because I, I'm going to want at least one of them to stay on that spot and the, the other one moves to the village and I should be able to do another upgrade soon enough. I think it makes sense to upgrade the bolster here. Uh, final answer? Sure, final answer. We'll do that. So we're going to upgrade the bolster and we're going to stay on that. You don't have to stay on that panel. I am. I do want to make it cheaper for me to build so I can get this guy out that space sooner rather than later. All right, that is it. I do get two money as part of my bonus of doing that tech upgrade. Get this hair off. Born in Mox? Isn't there a Max? We got a Mox and a Max? That's bananas. All right. So born in Max. Mox. Whatever. I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, I guess Mox is the buffalo, I'm assuming. We are now going to go to the Atoma second turn. The Atoma is doing another uh, factory or encounter token action. However, Riverwalk is not unlocked. Riverwalk doesn't get unlocked until we get to the fourth step on the Atoma Xena card. So therefore, that is actually not uh, a, an action that he can do. So he does have two encounter tokens in the neighborhood of the worker units however he just can't get there so since he can't complete that move he does a character move so the character's gonna get picked up where's the character don't want to move the character's gonna want to move closest space to the enemy combat unit that it can go now where can it go it can only go in the neighborhood of its other units so i mean theory it can go here or here one two three four five one two three four five they're both equal so what's the tiebreaker closest to factory this is closer to factory so this is a valid movement i pick him up i put him down right where he started we're done what does he get he's gonna get another mech Polania's not messing around and we have ourselves a star one more star river walks unlocked and things are gonna get nutty what am i doing i'm gonna move I think, yes, yes, we're going to move. Let's move. Man, I'm, I, I hate to get this guy off of the forest, but I think I think that's the right play so I can keep. Uh, I'm going to do one more upgrade and make the forest super cheap. So I'm going to move two units. I'm going to move the worker with the wood into the village so I can start uh, making some Smurf babies. And then I'm going to move Bourne and his trusty buffalo into that forest hex, and we're good to go. All right, we're now going to go back to the Atomus. Obviously, no bottom line action. I don't have any food. Um, the movement line, we are playing as the Nordics, not against the Nordics, so we ignore the... Um, worker move for the Nordic faction, but there will be a mech move. Where is the mech going to move? The mech's going to move in the neighborhood of one of its units closest to an enemy combat unit. Again, those are the plastic units, the mechs, or the character. However, Riverwalk's still not unlocked. It will be in five seconds, but it's not unlocked yet. So he will actually go here. He cannot be here because you can't have two combat units for the Atoma in the same hex. He'll go here instead with that worker. That's fine. They get along swimmingly. Uh, the Atom is going to get stuff. What does he get? He gets four power, so he's up to number six on the power track. If he gets up to 16, which he probably will, he will get a star for that. And then, again, there is no enlistment bonus line here. We have a star. Riverwalk is unlocked. All right. What am I doing now? These are the questions. I think I'm going to go do that same pattern again that I did in the first two turns so I can get the oil and then do a top and bottom line action again uh, when I do the produce. All right, so I'm going to go to trade. I'm going to pay a dollar. I'm going to get to oil. I put it where I have a Smurf. 
And no bottom line action. We're done. Atoma, what is it? All right, Albion would do a character and uh, factory or encounter token action, but obviously Albion is not playing. So what are we doing? We're doing a worker action. It's so a worker movement. So the worker gets picked up. Where do they go? Well, they're going to go in the hex in the neighborhood of the most Atoma units. So there is one, two, three, four other units on the board. This puts the worker in the neighborhood of all four of them. That is clearly going to be the most, and that is fine. So Atoma, the worker goes there. Atoma gets stuff. We're not playing against Albion, or sorry, Tagawa, so we can ignore that. Uh, Polania is going to get another worker and get a coinage. There is a enlistment bonus. I don't have any of those open yet. And then we have another star. So no such luck in getting those grayed out stars yet. Fingers crossed that changes. We're going to go to produce. We're going to get an oil. And we're going to make a Smurf baby. Whee! All right. Bottom line action. I'm going to spend these three oil to do a tech upgrade. I'm going to upgrade. I think it does make sense now. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the three. I'll do the three. I, I have some ideas that aren't totally formed, but I think this makes the most sense. All right, so I'm going to do this upgrade. So I unlocked the move. Again, I made the uh, building. Gonna, I can do it super, super cheap now. Uh, it's just going to cost me one wood. Uh, and then I'm going to get the two uh, coins for um, doing that tech upgrade. All right, so we have two on the board. We'll see how many more of those that we do. And that it's, yeah, that's fine. Atoma, what is the Atoma doing? Mm, I'm not going to do the movement one, actually. I'm going to actually take this from the produce because I have, have some ideas. All right, I like that. Um, so that's going to give me, I can produce on three different hexes. And I'm not sure what I'm, my next upgrade is going to be. So I think it makes sense to do that now while I know that I'm doing uh, an upgrade. All right. Already got the money for that. So Atoma, still not a gray one. We are going to do a character move. It's going to go to the factory. Oh, factory is not in the neighborhood of any units. It, if he was here, it would be in the neighborhood of, of himself, herself. Who is this? Anna, herself. Anna and Wotek, a big bear. Buffalo versus bear, of course. Um, we have the uh, character is going to go to either it's going to go to a counter token because it can't get to the factory uh, it has two in the neighborhood of other units however this one is closest to the factory that is a tiebreaker so we're going to send Anna there she's going to get this because that's what she does and is and then the uh, Pelania is going to get a worker and a coin and we have a star all right my turn. I'm going to. I wonder if it makes sense for me to move and see what this encounter token is first before I. Uh... Oh, so I think I move. I can produce again. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, we'll do that. So I'm going to move. Uh, with the character here, I'm going to leave everyone. No. And with the character here, I'm going to move the, the, oh, man. The problem with the this, the second panel, the trade panel, it's, it's four metal, and it doesn't give me any reward other than a mech. So when I get a mech out, it's just going to be utter garbage. Now I'm going to need to get at least one mech out. But it does make me hesitant to, to forgo any of my oil capabilities here. I want to be adjacent to encounter tokens, obviously. So I, ideally, actually, I have someone build something there. Oh, you know what? That will make sense. I'm going to move here, and then I'm going to move this worker there so I can keep getting the wood. And then when I get... Um, 
yeah, I could do some really nice combos there. Because once I have the, uh, I could probably have the windmill there or whatever. But again, that's going to be two encounter tokens that I'm adjacent to at the end of the at the end of the game. So I'm already up to a four point bonus. All right, so I stop my movement. I'm going to try trigger this encounter. And I'm actually going to get to look at it. Unlike Anna, she's so jealous. All right, here we go. Hold on, there's a question about the board. Is this, um... Those explorers' towns do look weird. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's on the Mage Knight joke. What? I'll ask him with <laughs> Um No, this is, this is a site. <laughs> Let's explore. I is this a board F? Oh, I know. Oh, dude, that's funny. That's a spirit out joke. Sorry, dude. My brain is <laughs> not totally functioning. Yes, this is a giant board. We're gonna. Um, I'm gonna pull out that vengeance. As a, yeah, as, as vengeance as a as a burning plague pretty soon. Uh, he's gonna come and wipe out those. I mean, the crazy thing is like the white invaders, right? I mean, it does it does actually feel uh, it it could fit. Uh, that's funny. Um, anyway, what do we got? We got some picture of a woman with a tiger. It uh, looks like the, the Rusviet uh, faction here. We're coming up on a mech. There is a soldier there. And the options I have, again, I'm choosing one. I could admire a retired soldier's prized gun. I gain a combat card and one popularity. I can hire the soldier to relive his glory days. I can pay two dollars to gain two power cards and uh, two power and two combat cards. Woo, or I can pay three popularity to gain a mech. Well, that's not happening. I only have two, and that's that's just too steep a cost to pay as far as I'm concerned. But I do like getting some more combat cards here for a couple of reasons, and that power could come in handy as well. I'm forgoing the opportunity to get a, a power bump here, a popularity bump here, but I think that's fine. So, yeah, let me pay two. I don't love doing, but I think more power cards is good. And my power cards are a three and a three. So three threes. Three, three. And uh, I get the two power. So that gets me up to six. So at least I'm tied with Polenia. So encounter is done. Uh, no bottom line action. We're good. Yeah, then I'm going to produce. Uh, yeah, I like where this is going. Like where this is going. This. I want to do this first, actually, and then the produce. Because uh, then I can get a structure out and then I'll have a windmill turn in for me as well. All right. Uh, Polania. Man, still no grace. We are doing a attack against a worker. So when you do an attack against a worker, you take the combat unit of, of the Yotoma that's closest to the home base. Obviously, this guy's in the home base. Can't get much closer. Uh, and it would actually attack any worker that is not protected by a combat unit in any hex that is in the neighborhood of another Otoma unit. The problem is for Polania, there are no workers in any of these spaces, right? So that work, that movement doesn't happen. So what's the next movement? A worker move. So I'm going to pick up one of the workers in the base, again, closest to home, and we put it in the neighborhood of the most Otoma units. It'll go right there. It's in the neighborhood of four units, and there are no other spots that are closest to four. So that is fine, and we get another star. Where are the gray stars when you want them? All right, I'm going to go to Bolster. I'm going to pay a dollar. I'm going to get three more on the track. So all of a sudden, 16 doesn't look totally unreasonable. I'm going to spend this wood, and I'm going to put out a structure. I'm going to put out this windmill. Hmm. Do I want do that windmill might not be necessary considering that guy's going to be chilling there and it's only one might make more sense monument would be an interesting point chase i already unlocked that hex with that tech upgrade I know I'm going to be doing that a couple more times. Yeah, I'll put out the monument. That's another way. If I don't get that enlistment bonus out soon, that's another way to make sure I get up the popularity track. I mean, it is, if you're going to beat the Otomo on hard, you better get up to that seven at minimum. Uh, so that's fine. And now I'm going to get the three money for building my first structure. All right, that is good. We are, and that is, again, adjacent to two encounter tokens, which makes mouths happy. Um, 
I don't know why I said Melt Heavy, but that's fine. We are going to go to the Atoma deck. The Atoma is doing a character or a uh, factory action. So the character is going to, it's a, I'm sorry, a factory or a counter token action. Uh, so we're going to pick up Anna and she's going to go here. It's the only other, she's still not in the, not, the factory still not in the neighborhood of Polinia. Uh, and this is the only other encounter token on the board that Anna can get to. So she goes there. She's going to bolster one, two, three, and she gets a coinage. Enlistment bonus. I still don't have any enlistments out, and it is a gray star. Victory is ours. We are now going to go to produce. Bam. So I'm going to get two more of these guys out. Now, I did make the cost of production a little bit higher because now we have to spend a power every time, which is fine. And I'm going to give myself a wood. So, again, five with site 101 getting to five um three or five workers is the sweet spot you really don't want to be in that place where you're spending and you're not getting the maximum benefit of what you're spending um uh, that's fine so I, I this is the first time i'm doing that produce action where i don't actually have uh the three oil to do an upgrade but i think the, i really need to go mech out i mean i could do this trade twice and then I'll be able to get a mech out in three turns. If I do trade, where am I going to put the structure? That's a good question. Because what I really want to do is get a mech here so then I can move all these as a unit, which will get me uh, tons of wheat every time I produce. And then actually over here would give me access to another encounter token uh, if I wanted to build a structure there. It might also make sense to... Uh, I have some few different options here. I could actually move guys into the oil field and uh and we'll see so i do want to also get around if i can i still want to you know not forget about my objectives here if i can do the shore up to shore pretty soon that'll probably be easier than controlling three tunnels but you know um you know we'll see how that plays up so what are we doing we have the atoma deck uh atoma's doing a worker move again closest to base uh, is the one in the base and now we're gonna find the neighborhood of the most other Atoma units. This is in the neighborhood of three. That's also in the neighborhood of three. They are both three hexes away from the factory. So then we go in reading order and the worker is just gonna go there. Polania gets three more of those. All right, I do need at least one max. So I think not efficient. I don't love it, but I think it makes sense for me to just do that now so I can really make the best use of those guys. Uh, so I'm going to, oh, that means that's gonna be three turns in a row that I am not doing, a, or three out of the next four turns, I'm not doing a bottom line action, which is, is not ideal, but that's fine. All right, so we're gonna go here. I'm gonna spend a dollar. I'm gonna get to metal. Sometimes I tell you, if you can get the right, uh, encounter token that that right encounter card that first turn it just opens up the game uh, so much more like so if I was able to get a card that gave me like two metal that would have been major 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 uh, but we're gonna have to kind of piecemeal it a little bit more now which uh, we'll just have to do uh, did I do this right so we went on the track six one two three four five six seven oh I forgot to move that last time one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did. That's correct now. My bad. Yeah, because there's eight cards here. Seven of them have stars. So we're good. Sorry about that. Atoma deck. Uh, Atoma is moving. I'm um, doing a, a non-attacking mech move. We go to the closest to home, and then we're going to put it as close as possible to the combat. I'm going to drop it on its head, and I'm going to put it as close as possible to the... Uh, combat unit that I have on the board. So I'm going to put it here, right? Because it's in the neighborhood of this worker uh, and it's going to be as close to the factory as possible. So here would be equal distant, but this actually gets it closest to factory, which is the tiebreaker. The Atoma is going to get another mech. We're not playing against Russia, otherwise it would actually, or Rusviet, otherwise it would get two mechs. And then we have a star. So if the next one is a star, we're going to be getting to stage two in 10 cards, which is one or two cards less than I would like. But say la vie. All right. I am going to spend a dollar, spending a lot of money. 
I'm going to bolster. So one, two, three. I'm going, I have the monument out, so I get a popularity. I'm going to spend this wood to get a structure. The structure I want is, oh, that could be nice. I want to get the mill out at some point, but I think this will make more sense. I'm going to put the mine on the board again. The mine has to go where a worker is. I'm going to put it here. And that's going to allow me some flexibility with these workers to get them more around the board. So it's not going to add to my end game total, which is fine. I'm, I'm not really looking to get higher than the four or the five. Uh, so we'll see. But if, if I can get a structure built there, that will do fairly well. I get three money from that. And that's it. We're going to go to the Atoma. Oh, he is going to advance that stinker. All right, so we have a, we're playing as the Nordics, not against the Nordics. We're going to do a factory or an encounter token action. So the character's going to go to the factory. There are three factory cards here. The character takes one out of the game at random. Uh, Polanyi is going to get a power and going to get a worker. I would get an enlistment bonus if I had the power one open. And Planning gets a star, so we get on the number two. So Planning gets its first star of the game. And then we take all of the power, the 19 Atoma cards, we shuffle them up, and we turn them upside down. Playing a little bit of Stranger Things here. We are in the upside down now, kids. Good luck. That is fine. We are now going to get our mech out. Not nearly as quickly as is ideal but how this played out so i'm going to spend a dollar i'm going to get two more metal so now i have the four metal i'm going to take the four metal that's oh, fine i can't even get it out of the thing so we're going to take the two metal i just got the two that was on the board and i'm going to put out seaworthy because that will give me some options to get my uh my character out of that little Line that he's in. I don't love. I like see where they were better than the Riverwalk. Oh, Riverwalk! Actually, I can move into that. I can move into the. Uh, I can move into the forest there, which I don't hate. Do not hate. And this guy is already in a mine. All right. I usually would take Seaworthy. I like the. And if I lose a battle, I like being able to retreat. Uh, into a, a, a lake. But I think in this case, I don't want to get here. Although my combat, I could, I would probably win a combat. I would. Uh, see where these speed, they're all so strong. Mine being over there does mean that I need, I, I can't take speed, otherwise I would want to. That's the reality is whatever I don't take a Seaworthy or Riverwalk, I'm not probably not going to get to it because speed would be the next one I want to get to for sure. Speed really helps you get around the board a lot quicker. Um, see, in this very rare instance, I think Riverwalk makes more sense. And so we will just do that. There are no bonuses from that. So that stinks. And now we will go to... And I'm wishing I did that three now. Uh, that's fine. I can't go back. All right. So we're going to do the Atoma's turn. Atoma, now we're in the stage two cards. Atoma's doing a non-attacking me mech move. So this, these, all these spaces are in the neighborhood of the, actually that one too, are in the neighborhood of the Atoma uh, and are adjacent to a combat unit of mine. So we're going to go here, and then it's going to be closest to factory that matters. So again, Polanyi is creating like a little wall around the factory, and that's where he'll stay. Polanyi is going to get two money. And Polanyi is going to get its last mech and gets a star. All right, I'm going to now move. Question is what I want. 
oil or I probably want wheat. So I'm going to move. I'm going to take these guys. And we're going to move them here. So when I produce, they're going to get a ton of food. I'm going to leave that worker there. So he'll keep getting one wood at a time so I can get all my structures out. And then I'm going to use my Riverwalk ability to move my worker, or sorry, my character to, uh, to that tunnel there. Yes. Comment about the interaction with the AI. Uh, yeah, I haven't ever played Viticulture. <laughs> uh, I'm not a huge worker placement guy. So I, I like Caverna. Um, I've heard really good things, but maybe someone else in the chat can kind of speak to Viticulture uh, a, a bit more. Because, uh, you know, some of our games, they're like Scythe's the only one I really love. The rest of them are like, I can do without. And even Scythe, like, I don't I don't really love. Like, a Fenris is, I don't even know what's going on with Fenris. Like, it drives me bananas. Um, I don't really play the the wind gambit that much. Um, I just like scythe and and the invaders from afar. So, um, oh no, scythe is is way less complex by by a good amount. I'd be curious to see what BGG has on their complexity ratings, um, but I would say it's a uh, it's got a lot less uh, complexity than Spirit Island and, and a lot less depth as well. Um, and what's hey, Eric? How are you? By the way, <laughs> should have said hi first. All right. Um, so I moved. We're good. I, yeah, that will work. And when I can produce, I can start getting a list. The enlistment, getting the recruits out is really nice because you those bonuses on these cards really do start adding up. All right, are we gonna have a battle? No. So we're playing as an Ordex, not against an Ordex. We're gonna do a uh, mech, non attacking mech move, and the the Nordex are. Oh, okay. So we have a couple options. So all these are in the neighborhood. So closest to factory, this is one away, uh, and we're gonna go reading order. So this guy just moved here, and now we have this here, which isn't ideal, because if that combat happens, all my workers go wee 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 all the way home, which would make me sad. Now, I mean, if I lose, I mean, hopefully, ideally, I wouldn't lose. All right, um, Polanyi's gonna get some stuff. They're gonna get another power card. They're gonna get a money, and they're gonna get a mech. I don't have any more mechs, that's fine. To, it's actually character or mech because if, again if you if you defeat the character in combat the character goes back to the the faction mat not to the home base like it does for the player um so that changes things a little bit uh i don't have the enlist guy open and we have another star so the gray stars are not coming out for us unfortunately uh my turn i'm going to go to produce i'm going to spend a power i'm going to get myself one wood and four food To give me a nice, uh, nice. Ooh, if I build, that's interesting. If I build the structure there, that's going to get me adjacent to three. That would be five total. So I actually would have an outside shot to get to the six or the seven to get those nine bonus points. All right, I'm just I'm not doing a lot of top and bottom line action. So there's something something I did wrong in my strategy for sure because this is not. <laughs> It's not the greatest game of sight I've ever played, uh, to say the least. Uh, we are going to go back to the Atoma. The Atoma, if it was Saxony, they would attack. Uh, not Saxony. So they're going to do the character or mech. I'm sorry, the, the factory or the encounter token move. There are no encounter tokens left because Polinia has hoovered them all up. So there are going to be no more encounter tokens for Polinia to get. So Polinia instead is going to do a non-attacking character move they're gonna look they're still gonna want to stay closest to factory but they're gonna want to get close they prioritize getting closer to one of my units so this is one away from my unit that's one away from my unit that's one away from my unit but that's further from the factory so they're gonna stay uh here because it's one away from my unit it's one away from the factory and in reading order uh this comes before that so that will stay right there. Polanyi is going to get another combat card. It's going to get two more tokens. And I would get a token if I had a bonus. I don't. And we have a star, which means Polanyi gets another star on the track. Yikes. Uh, I'm tempted to do some battle here. So one of the things that's nice, if I was to, to instigate a battle, I would look at the top card on the discard pile. 
it doesn't make much sense to instigate a battle against Polania when there's no freaking resources there. Uh, but it is it's something that is on my radar for sure. I think if he was doing an attack move, it would attack me. It would attack my character here before it would attack my mech there. So that makes me feel a little bit better because I was getting worried about that. Let me. I'm only on the three there, which isn't great. <laughs> Uh, what did I do wrong? All right, I'm going to go to the move action. Oh, but if I want to do a combat, potentially, maybe I do move next turn. Maybe. Five, seven. If I moved, where would I move? These are the questions I ask myself. Move, produce. Ooh, you know what? I could. I do the movement, and I get the underworld advantage. I think that makes the most sense. All right, I'm going to go to the move action. I'm going to protect these workers. I don't want to attack against worker action and all those workers go home. I'm going to move one worker through the tunnel system to there, and I have one more move I can do. I'm going to move. Yeah, I think I'm just going to chill. I'm not going to use it. Uh, bottom line action, I'm going to spend these three food. Oh, you know what I could do? Because I have two guys still there. And if I'm just trying to maximize turns here, I can spread out. I'll move. Oh, that's in the neighborhood. I'll move this guy across the river into that village. That might give me another option to backdoor into a all my eight workers out uh, for stars here. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to spend these three food, and I'm going to get one dollar for the enlistment bonus. And now I get to get the immediate benefit of the enlistment, and then the long-term benefit. Um, I'm going to get the long-term benefit. I want to get the popularity thing opened up. My immediate benefit. I want to take. Ooh. That's even nice. I'm going to get two more power. So I can potentially get up to 16 power on my very next turn, depending on whether I get attacked right now by Polania. Didn't attack me. All right. So we're going to do a non-attacking mech move. We're going to get the closest to the base. Obviously, this guy is adjacent to it. Uh, Polania is going to want to go, again, same analysis. It's going to want to stay uh, closest to me as possible without attacking, and it's going to want to um, stay close to the factory, so that's going to be this spot. It's one away from me, one away from the factory. No brainer. Uh, Polania gets four power, so they're up to 16, which does mean they get a third star, which is unfortunate. It is, uh, ooh, what I just, <laughs> so if I attack Polania now, uh, I would get, there's four resources at stake depending on where I attack them. Uh, so that's a little, that's, eh, I'm kind of wishing I'd, had to move back because then I could attack them now and do that. Then the problem is that I'm not going to get the star from, from getting up to 16. So it's kind of a given to take there. And Polania gets one worker enlistment bonus. If I had the power card opened up, I could get that. I don't. Polania gets a star. So we have only seen one gray star. That is a bad, bad, bad thing. <laughs> not loving that. So I'm going to spend Un Dalher to get a power of three. I hit 16 myself. I get that star, which is great. I'm going to get the heart, the popularity for the monument, and then I'm going to spend this one wood that I have, and I'm going to get three money for that bonus. I'm going to get another popularity because I unlocked that, and I'm going to put this structure here. That windmill will do me some good there. All right, maybe it's not as hopeless as I think. I don't know. It's feeling pretty hopeless. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Polania, what are you doing? Oh, and by the oh yeah, this is actually your last turn. Uh, underworld advantage. I control these three tunnels at the end of my last turn, so I should have claimed that then, and that would have given me another star there. So not horrible, horrible. 
just think you're the horrible. All right, so these will go out of the game. Again, you can only do one of the two uh, secret objectives. Uh, unless you're Saxony, then you can do both of them. Uh, and that's great. So I got my bonus. I got the two popularity. So once I build my last structure, I'll get up to the second tier for popularity, which is another thing I'm doing. So some things are starting to come together, but uh, Polanyi is definitely moving faster than I, I think is ideal. Uh, what do we got? So this card only has one resource if I were to attack the next turn. Polanyi is going to do a character factory or encounter. Now, the factory, since it already has a factory card, it does not prioritize going to the factory again. It actually prioritizes the encounter. So in the neighborhood of any of its units, this is an encounter token in the neighborhood of uh, itself. This is an encounter token in the neighborhood. It's not going to send a worker back, so that's not in the neighborhood anyway. So these are both two away from the factory. It will prioritize distance from factory. Uh, this is first in reading order. So Polania goes there. That token comes off the board. And then Polania gets stuff. We're not playing as Albion, so we don't worry about that mech symbol. But we get a worker and two money here. Yeah. Polania gets another star, so we have to put their fourth star on the track. Oh, man. Just relentless. <laughs> Where are the grays? <laughs> Uh, 3.4. Arkham's only at 3.4? What? <laughs> That's crazy to me. You know, I guess like... No, 3.1. 3.41, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 3.9 yeah. is a 4 makes sense. I, I guess Arkham... I guess you can start playing quicker. But, I, I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't imagine that Circle Undone is a 3.4, right? That just doesn't... It just seems bananas. I, so I, was, I wonder if it really scales. Yeah, one, there's just so much going on in some of the later cycles. Uh, but who knows, man? I, that's it is what it is. Um, I just did that relentless. I was whining about that because that's what I do. So yeah, it's my turn again. Pretty convinced of that. What do I need to do? I'm going to. I think we just go back and forth between produce, move. And bolster again, right? I'm gonna want to initiate a combat. I mean, I literally want to only have three turns left here. My combat cards are kind of garbage. I don't want to move without having the money to at least enlist again. Oh, I get two more hearts that way, which is nice. But the hearts actually aren't gonna help me that much because uh, I'm probably not getting to 13. So that's that's pretty unrealistic. So let me go to produce. I spend on power, which is fine. Once you get the 16 once, you're good. You can spend the power as much as you want. You, that, that star I picked up is uh, never going away. Oh, if I build there, that would get me adjacent to one, two, three, four, <laughs> six different encounter tokens. That would max out my bonus for that. Got a lot going on, kids. All right. Um, again, I'm still not doing a bottom. I'm not... Not doing a bottom line action with the producer is always not great because you do it so much in the game. But that's just where I'm at. I'm going to get two oil. Oh, two oil. It's like oil. It's just wood. So in theory, I can produce on three different hexes plus the windmill. The windmill counts as a worker, but it also counts as its own hex. So if you count the number of... I have workers on four different hexes. One of them includes the windmill. So I actually can produce everywhere. And I probably will. Probably will, but the next time I produce, I will have to lose a popularity. But I think I can make up for that somewhere else, especially if I take another enlistment bonus and get that popularity just to give me a cushion. Because if I get all eight out, that's another way to get into the fall into a star, which I like. So I'm going to get two wheat, two food for this hex because of the two workers, and then another food because the windmill's there. All right. I'm also going to get a worker in this village, and I'm going to get an oil in this tundra, and I'm going to get a wood in this forest. Look at me go. I do not have enough oil to do an upgrade, but that's fine. I'm not that concerned about that. I think what I do next is I move and enlist. 
If I can do this and this, that's a really strong way to end this game and could potentially get me as many, well, move and list produce ideally, because that would give me three or four stars. Oh, two with uh, three for assuming I win the 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 battle that's about to ensue. I really should have taken that move tech upgrade early in the game, uh, so I might live to regret that. All right, make it gray. <laughs> Still not gray. Worker move. Where's the worker gonna go? The worker's gonna go into the neighborhood. Oh, that's even worse. Ah, oh, it's even worse. And I don't have the speed mech out. So, Polania is about to go right to the factory, because that is in the... Ooh, ooh, nope. All right, it's going to maximize the number, neighborhood of the most units. Actually, this has five. Ooh, that's better, because <laughs> I don't want them to end in the factory, although it's looking inevitable at this point. So, there are one, two, three, four, five units for Polania that have this in their neighborhood, and it will go there. Remember, you disregard lakes when you're moving for the Atoma. Um, Polania is going to get... Uh, two power, but they're already maxed out. They already have all their workers. Uh, I do have an enlistment bonus for popularity, so I get one there. But even better, I don't need to worry about... I can take something different when I do the enlist I'm about to do, which is nice. And star, because, of course, it's always a freaking star. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if I can get into the center. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But that would be a nice little sweet boon for me here so oh the problem if i lose i mean here's the risky thing if i lose this combat oh of course there's there's no there's freaking no resources there either if i lose this combat uh polania might actually end the game on their next turn which is really not great so i think because of that risk and because there's no resources there anyway I think that I build now. I have the place to do it. And then I worry about moving as my last turn. And maybe even I'm going to do two combats. And kind of heads my bets a little bit. All right. So we're going to move. Nope. I lied. We're going to play a dollar. We're going to bolster. And I have not as much money as I hoped. I'm going to get... A power card because I'm already well above seven. So you're going to get three power or a power card. It's another three. <laughs> There's only 12 threes in this giant deck, and I have four of them. Awesome. We're going to get a, a popularity because of the monument. I'm going to spend this wood that gives me three money and another popularity. It gets me up to eight. And I'm going to put this here, and that gives me a star for all four of my structures. Cool. Mm -mm. I mean, that was my primary goal going in. Is I knew I wanted to focus hard on that track. Uh, just worried it's not going to be enough the way this is played out. But if I move next turn, get a combat star, do an enlistment, I had speed out to be easier to get there. That's just that's a hard board to get those mechs out as quickly as you would hope. All right, what are we doing? Oh no, <laughs> we're doing combat. That's what's going on. Uh, sure. So we have a combat action with either the, either the character or the mech for Polania. We're gonna do closest to the Atoma's home base. One, two, three. One, two. Three. One, two, three. These are both three away from the base. Reading order. This one is a priority. So this is where we're going. Somebody has a prediction for you. Yeah, it was, yeah I was due. <laughs> He's going to go. Well, the nice thing, too. So when you when you take... Oh, it's a gray star, by the way. Uh, when you take cards off the deck, they go right into the discard. So we are actually competing for some resources. And obviously that can come uh, come in handy if I if I win it. It's... it's it's not, I don't I don't know the breakdown. Like if I if I got this card for the attack, I would have got crushed. It's seven plus two combat cards, and my combat cards are garbage. Um oh and I don't yeah, there's not even an adjacent lake I could retreat to here. So that's fine. Uh so this is gonna picked up, it's going to attack me here. All right. So the priority is um closest to the factory, the least number of units. 
So if it has a choice, it will always attack where I have one combat unit instead of two. One of the main strategies in Scythe Atom against the Atoma is trying to get two units, two combat units in the factory, and then having another combat unit somewhere on the board. Obviously, you have to play a more mech strategy than that, uh, and that way the Atoma will almost never attack the factory. It's always attacking the one, um, which is a nice way to make sure the factory is yours. Uh, here, obviously, it's just attacking me because it's going to go. These are both equal distance from the factory. They both only have one combat unit. Um, it doesn't care that I have everything else that's here. Uh, all it cares about is that this is first in reading order from, again, a left to right, top to bottom. So what are we doing? I'm going to max out. I don't feel that great about it. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to take my little handy-dandy wheel. I'm going to spend seven power. I can use one card. You can use the number of cards that you have units. I only have the one. And hopefully Born ate his Wheaties this morning. Uh, so again, if I win this, no, nope, never mind. He's attacking me. So that actually strike what I just said. <laughs> if you attack the Atoma, then you get those resources. If he attacks you, uh, you don't get the resources. And that was actually a rule I played wrong for a very long time. But thematically, it makes a lot more sense than what I was doing. Um, so yeah, totally disregard that. So if I lose, that if I win, I don't get resources because it's not like the Otoma's going to come in with a couple of wood and, and drop it because it's appreciative of me crushing it. So what are we doing? We pull this over. Oh, it's like the same thing. <laughs> That's really bad. All right, I lose. So here it is. It is, he got seven power, and he's going to pull two power cards. I can't win. It's a five and a three. So he takes seven power off. He goes from 16 to nine. I take seven power off. I go from 15 to eight. Uh, this goes away. That's uh, over here. So you put another deck for the combat. Good card using combat. I get a consolatory uh, card. It's not a three this time. It's a two. <laughs> and Atoma gets a star for winning a combat. Yikes. And this guy goes back to the home base, which is going to make it really hard for me to win a combat the way I hoped at this point. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know how to. I don't think there's a way I can weasel a win out of this. I don't, I don't have speed, which makes this extra hard. He's probably getting a six star anyway, so I might just risk a combat because if I lose, I lose, but it's not like I'm giving him any more points that he would already have. Um. Yeah, just something, something broke in a, my approach to this game. Tonight, so uh, he oh, Toma gets stuff. Toma's gonna get a dollar. He gets a worker. He already has all his workers. I do have that opened up, so I for that listen bonus, so I get a popularity. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, I haven't done a thorough breakdown of this deck, so I don't know what my odds are here. Uh, but if I can get a victory, get a couple of resources, uh, I think this is the the risk that makes the most sense here so i'm going to uh move i'm going to attack with my only remaining combat unit i'm going to attack the only person i really can um this is on the discard pile so now i would get those resources i'll put them there so i don't forget in case by some miracle i actually win this i'm attacking now the nice thing is the atoma is below uh below 14 so sometimes there's actually a big difference in how much power they use between 7 and 13 or 8 and 13 and 14 and 16 sometimes they're not it just depends um so that was my first action i'm going to get my character back on the board just to have another hex eye control and now we have to my movement's over we initiate combat i'm going to max out seven and three again that's his wheel his dirty wheel you notice I use a Femris wheel when I play the Atoma now. And what is he attacking me with? Come on, give me a chance. Oh, man, you got to be kidding me. Uh, so he is attacking with seven, and he's pulling one card. Now, Aggressor does win ties. The chances of him having a three is pretty small, uh, considering I have four of them already. So hopefully we pull a two. He is only pulling one one card this time as opposed to the three he pulled last time please give me something nice he only has a three himself set 10 to 10 i actually win so he spent seven power he goes from nine to two i spent seven power i go from eight to one this goes away 
the Atoma gets a consolatory uh, power card, and this goes off, and he goes back. So I went back to my base, Atoma goes back to his board, and I actually win these two oils on that spot, which is nice. I get a combat star, and uh, now at the end of the turn, huh, doesn't make sense. I spend these three. Now remember, resources are points at the end, but it's only going to be two points for every two. So like each of these is basically worth a point. I think it. I'll get more points by actually spending the enlistment bonus. So I'm going to spend these three. So doing a bottom line action, I'm spending those three wheat. I'm going to get a uh, money, and I'm going to be able to get as my second enlistment bonus. I'll unlock the coin one just in case. Uh, this game is probably going to overrun the Atomas next turn, and I'll put it there and get two more coins. It's going to be a close one. I'm really not sure how this is working out. If I get, if I do have another, oh, I'm not going to be able to move into the factory. Worst case scenario is he has like a worker move and goes plop right there. Although that wouldn't be the most. That's still not the most number of uh, of Atoma units. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Toma card, it is the end. We have a factory or encounter token move. Okay, so the... F oh, that's, that's horrible. That's so bad. Oh, say it ain't so. Now, he's gonna, Anna's going to end up right there. Um, so basically, already has a factory card, right? So it doesn't prioritize that. There are no more encounter tokens anywhere on the board that are in the neighborhood of Polania, so can't do that move. So now we have to go to the character non-attacking character move. The character is going to go where? Adjacent to one of my units, there or there, closest to factory is a tiebreaker, bam, that's a nine point swing for the Atoma. Atoma gets three power, it already has all its workers. It, uh, if I had the power card thing, I would get a power card, I don't, and we get a star. That is six stars immediately triggering the end game scoring. If I lose my nine, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> so, Polania, what do you got? Polania's got six stars. Number of hexes one, two, three, four, five, oh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hexes. No resources. How much money? Polania has. Uh -oh. Whoa. Hold on. Crisis. Yeah, baby. There's a crisis. So Mrs. Playthrough is, uh, is uh, struggling with plugs tonight. Um, so that was fun. Uh, Polanyi has 16 coins. And that's it. So 73 points for Polania. The Nordiques, did they pull it out? Or is the shrinkage too much? We'll see. Um, Nordiques have nine popularity, so it gets them into the second tier. Uh, have four stars. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexes. We have how many resources? One, two, three, four. We have money. We have 12, 15. Ah, oh, we're, we're going to be, I think I'm going to lose by nine. <laughs> I'm going to lose by eight. Uh, and then we have seven that we're adjacent to. I lost by eight. <laughs> So oh, gross. Um, nah, I guess it wouldn't matter because if Polania didn't end up there, just play them at a one by one. Um, uh, there's a big car going right by my house right now with loud music on. So uh, you're welcome for the entertainment factor, guys. Um, definitely. Yeah, 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 no, you guys are talking about Arkham. That's that's music in my ears, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, we lost by eight. Uh, the final score was, um, I'm so upset I'm throwing these here. Uh, final score was 73 to uh, 65. Um, and just uh, just was not able to pull it out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious when I, when I watch it back, which I probably will uh, at some point. I'm curious what I might have been able to do different. Um, you know there is it does i mean look the battles were i, I went with a 10 both times and, and i won one i lost one that's about right uh, had i gotten luckier there that could have helped but really just felt like i never i did too many actions where i was just doing too many turns where i was not doing a, a bottom line action 
Um, I had to get that one mech out. So I, I could have maybe, if I got a worker there early and, and put the windmill there, um, and the, as the end, the, the windmill wasn't all that helpful here, right? So, but the monument ended up being really helpful to get me above there. And obviously the mine is what allowed me to get all my workers over here. So I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to really rethink how, uh, how this whole, this whole game played out. But we, we got all our structures out, you know, 65 points isn't great. I mean, if you, you score, you usually want to score in the low seventies and, and you'll usually win more often than not. Um, when all the, the stars align and you get the right combination of faction board and, uh, and, and the player mat i mean you can definitely get into the hundreds um but uh yeah thanks lexus man i appreciate it but this is it's a good one it's a nice it's a nice change of pace when i don't when i don't want to play <laughs> low <Lola> haze <laughs> and uh just want to kind of go back and feel a little bit of nostalgia i mean this again this is really where it started for me um I did put on my Patreon page today, I put a new schedule. So you have the December schedule totally laid out. I am trying to up to twice a week. So we'll see how long I can, I can keep that schedule for. Um, so we have the live playthroughs and, and every other Wednesday when there's not a live playthrough, I'll try to throw another game on. i um, looking to get Aeon's End on the channel pretty soon. I'm really loving that game. Glad I picked that up uh, pretty recently. On Sunday, there is going to be the next Spirit Island Jacket Earth coming out. Shifting Memory of Ages, really, really cool spirit. Uh, and then we have Grinning Trickster coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're kind of working through that. Hopefully have all the spirits wound up by the end of January, then get into some of the scenarios and some of the other fun and games that we can have with uh, Spirit Island. Uh, that's it. Next live playthrough, we're going to do uh, scenario two of the Numbers Legacy Cycle. I will be playing with Ashkan Pete. I mean, I should be saying I'm, I'll be playing with Duke uh, and his male human friend, uh, Ashkan Pete. But... Um, We'll be uh, we'll be doing that uh, on the channel. I'll keep working through that uh, those those scenarios over in the upcoming months, and then I do have four Mage Nights filmed and ready to be edited. So we'll we'll be keep coming back to that. So anything people want to see, definitely put it in the comments. Uh, I'm I'm open for suggestions and all ears. Uh, Dawn of the Zeds was uh, put on the channel on Sunday as a recommendation of a of a subscriber. So and and it was uh, really well received, and I was really glad. To uh, learn about that game and, and uh, take on that beast, it's a that's a that's another fun, fun, fun game. So so many games, so little time. Uh, not seeing any questions on the chat. I will wrap this up. Anything comes up, questions, comments, epiphanies, put them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. And until next time, happy gaming.